The Green Bay Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst does it again. It is a move that was done in the past, but as the season ramps up and starts tonight, we're reminded of it. I'm going to break that down for you guys in this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a second to do so. Okay, so let's jump into it. The Green Bay Packers, Brian Gutekunst, I feel is one of the better GMs in the league, and we're reminded of it, especially when we start playing against a talent team like the Philadelphia Eagles, when you've got to go out there and you've got to cover A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. One of the better duos in the league. You can make the argument it is the best duo of receivers out there in the league. So the Packers are going to have their hands full tonight. But when I'm talking about a move that was done in the past by Brian Gutekunst, man, it just it gives me goosebumps to know that Brian Gutekunst drafted so well in 2018 and we're reaping the benefits of that now. Okay, so Gutekunst, if you remember, I think it was his first year under GM with the Green Bay Packers and he made a great first impression. In 2018, they had the 14th pick. They trade that to the New Orleans Saints. They trade back to the 27. The New Orleans Saints took Marcus Davenport. Marcus Davenport, formerly with the Saints, is now with the Lions at D end, uh, opposite side of Hutchinson. So we're going to be seeing him a lot this year. Um, what a move by Brian Gutekunst. Okay, because you, when you couple the two talents together side by side, you got Marcus Davenport and you got Jair Alexander. Of course, the Packers drafted Jair Alexander that year. But not only did they get the 27th pick, they got that 2019 first round pick. And then he used that 27th pick and a third round pick that year to move back up to, to number 18 when they selected Jair Alexander. Man, what a great move, especially when we are going into a game like the Philadelphia Eagles tonight in Brazil um, and you're facing A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Okay, so there's an article that came out um, that was ranking the Green Bay Packers, stacking them up with the NFC North, and it came out by Sports Illustrated. They took the, the Lions unanimously. Okay, so why did they have the Packers finishing second in the division. Well, here's the reasons why it says right here. If you can't see it, I'll highlight it for you. Can green Bay stop the run question mark? Okay. That is a valid question. Can the Packers stop the run? We're going to hit that in a second. And are the Packers good enough uh, at cornerback to stop teams with two elite wide receivers? Well, we're going to get to see that tonight. And I think the results are going to be good. Um, so, when we start taking or talking about the cornerback position in Green Bay and, uh, you know, answering the guy's question of, okay, here are a couple of weak spots that are on the Green Bay Packers defense. Can they stop the run? And are they good enough to stop a good duo of receivers? There's not a better duo of receivers, arguably, in the league than the Philadelphia Eagles. Jair Alexander is that good. Okay. Whether we like it or not, us Packer fans, I know we are, there's been frustration around the Jair Alexander topic and the payday as opposed to the results out in the football field the last couple of years, obviously missing a significant amount of games last year and then being suspended for the one. Jair Alexander is one of those guys that is going to wear his emotions on this on his sleeve. He did not like Joe Barry. A lot of defenders in Green Bay didn't like Joe Barry. This is going to be a different Packer defense, and I'm super excited about it. Jeff Halfley is way better than Joe Barry already. Okay, We've already seen some results. I know it's preseason, but we're going to reap the benefits of Joe Barry and his the intellect he brings to the football side of the field. We're going to see that. Okay. Tonight, Jair Alexander, and then you've got Eric Stokes. Are the Packers good enough to cover an AJ Brown and Devontae Smith? Two great wide receivers. Eric Stokes. I Eric Stokes, unfortunately for him, he's been plagued with injuries. I'm hoping they can get that behind them. Is Brian Gutekunst, even a, even if Stokes has a great season, is Gutekunst going to pay Stokes? I don't see that happening. I think Eric Stokes is just playing for a future paycheck, not with the Packers because the Packers are deep with Carrington Valentine. I like Carrington Valentine a lot. So if anything happens to Stokes throughout the season, we know Carrington Valentine, when called upon, can step up. But I think Eric Stokes is legitimately a very good corner in the league. 
you look at his rookie season and then you couple that with adding Jeff Halfley into the mix and the excitement with the players, new scenery in Green Bay under defensive coordinator there. I think there's going to be a level of excitement, comfortability, and just going out there and playing football. And Eric Stokes has raw ability out there along with Jair Alexander. Um, and we're reminded of Brian Gutekunst's brilliance in 2018 when he did all of that to get not only draft capital, but also get Jair Alexander, one of the better corners in the league. And a lot of people may be like, hey, listen, pump the brakes here. The season hasn't even started yet. Jair Alexander is in the past. The last couple of years, we haven't seen it out of him. Well, you're going to see it, and you're going to see it tonight. Then you have the secondary of the Packers, and you got Xavier McKinney. What a brilliant move by Gutekunst going and getting an Xavier McKinney, and we're going to see that top 10 safety in the league, in my opinion. I absolutely feel Xavier McKinney is going to um, be a great leader out there on the Packers secondary. They're already looking to him. You got young guys like Javon Bullard, that little stick of dynamite. I'm really hoping we can see some very solid play out of him, even though he's young and raw. But if he can't, Evan Williams is going to be a great guy to substitute in there. Fresh legs. Evan Williams, I love this dude. I think he is super talented. So the Green Bay Packers, yes, I like them being an underdog. I think they're actually going to finish first in the division. But in my opinion, the biggest hurdle for the Packers on defense is going to be at the linebacker position. Isaiah McDuffie, Quay Walker, Eric Wilson. Okay, here's my breakdown of those guys. Quay Walker, is he living up to where the Packers drafted him? Not yet. I think Quay Walker, you're going to see a lot of growth out of him this season under Jeff Halfley. But this, to me, is the biggest question mark on this Packers team, the middle of the field. Quay Walker, I think, is super good. Tyron Hopper, I think he's only proving that he's getting better the more playing time this dude got in preseason, the better he looked, but he's too young and too raw yet to put out there ahead of Isaiah McDuffie. And then you got Edrin Cooper, but Eric Wilson is starting over him due to some injuries Edrin Cooper sustained. I'm super excited about what Edrin Cooper can do, but it's going to be middle of the season before we can start seeing Tyron Hopper and Edrin Cooper and what they can bring to the table in this Packer defense. So this, to me, is going to be the biggest concern and question mark for the Packers early on this season. Unless the Packers sustain an injury on the offensive line, our depth on the offensive line, I don't feel confident in. That is my take on it. But I think Brian Gutekunst is brilliant, and he does it again. We're going to see what he did in 2018. We're going to see the results of that tonight. In tonight's game, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, I think the Packers win this one 27-24. Leave your comments. Let me know the score of the game, who's going to win, and what's the score going to be. But as always, go Pack Go.